the Great Recession from 2007-2009. It's also known as the 2008 real estate collapse. Causing, well, the, the causes was housing market collapse, subprime mortgage crisis, global financial crisis. The impact was very severe, and it was a global recession that was high unemployment, significant declines in housing and stock, stock markets. Then what also happened in 2020, which we don't need to get into, uh, but the truth about it is, is that 2008 bubble that happened, that, that real estate uh, crisis, it they, they put such beautiful band-aids on such huge um, gashes. The bottom line of that was when you hear subprime lending, that is predatory lending. That is people that can't afford it. That is people, you know, there was at the time, there's movies and documentaries, people's dogs got mortgages. The same predatory lending that uh, they, they, they so elegantly call subprime, uh, I did state that um, you know those people couldn't afford it. Maybe they could afford it at that time, but when the interest rates popped up, or maybe they um, they were subprime because their credit history wasn't that good. But there was people that literally their dogs were um, you know getting getting loans. Everybody became a real estate agent from the pizza delivery guy who just bumped into everybody. And when he bumped into everybody, he's like, I can get you a new house. To the person at the gym who was uh, spotting you and uh, you know was a uh, was a I guess a fitness coach or whatever, right? Um, you know uh, a fitness trainer. Those dudes all became, those dudes and those ladies all became real estate agents and they went and did that. And then the loan officers um, for um, servicing companies, and the servicing companies are the banks, just to let you know, right? Those servicing, um, uh, the people that were servicing the loans and the loan officers were writing it in, in such a way that they could get approved and that they were subprime and things like that. And when all that was going on, people were um, betting against the hedge. And a lot of people made money. I'm not here to, to throw all the facts in the ears. I could do that, but then my video wouldn't get that much views or people would find it boring or say that I talk too fast just to let you know this is the first time you're watching one of my videos I am homeless right now I'm in my um my hotel I got a hotel for a little bit I'm trying to hold on to it uh, but I was homeless living in my car I have a lot of videos um so you know if you want to find out how I became homeless in my, my whole story please check that out also um uh shout out to well first and foremost shout out to Alien Army those are the people that rock with me heavy they rock with me tough checking in checking in they're people that are subscribed to me and they always hit the like button drop a comment right and if you don't know what to put as a comment put an alien emoji put a thumbs up put something i do respond to 99.9% .9 of my comments so if you put something i'm going to read it and i'll and i'll respond okay so back to what i was saying oh uh, also real quick if anybody wants to um throw me donations my cash app is the same as my youtube name alien ascent i'll put that in the description and that if also uh if anybody wants to reach out to me you got a private message or anything like that uh, you can send me an email. I put the email in the description. It's alienarmycontact at gmail.com. So, like I was saying, um, that was a little bit of a spill. If you see gnats flying around, I had some ripe bananas. I threw them away. Life happens to us all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but um, I'll be catching those uh, those little dirty gnats uh, soon, soon enough. Uh, but like I was saying, right, those same practices still go on today. Not to the level that it once did when it crashed in 2008. And if you see me moving around, it's because I can see a gnat. Yeah, that's really unbe real unbecoming for me doing a video, but this is raw and real. So this is why you should definitely rock with me. At least I, I keep it legit, you know what I mean? Those same practices are being um, that, that crashed and made everything go bad in 2008 are, are still being done now. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not behind their computer and knowing, you know, that kind of stuff. Like I can, I can't give you, you know, actual dates and, and times and stuff like that. But what I can tell you is that um, they get audited, right? And I can't say the name of the banks because I don't want to get sued and I'm a homeless person. I do not want to, I, I don't want, you know, civil, uh, be brought into civil court or get caught on judge duty, uh, slandering something, you know what I mean? But um, you guys are more than welcome to Google this stuff or ask Chat GPT, you know what I mean? Uh, I know a lot of people are doing that lately. Um, but nonetheless, um, those same, uh, so they get audited by the government, right? I, I believe it's uh, the IRS that goes and does that, or they have a government agency to make sure, you know, there was rules and regulations that were put in place after the bailouts in 2008, right? <clears throat> Them doing that, um, when they get audited, when they find out, let's say, for example, a servicing company, which is a bank, they, they service loans for investors, right? <clears throat> uh, and it's the investors who throw up the money, and then the, the banks take a percentage for servicing those loans. They're the ones who are responsible because they're the ones who are serving it, right? And, uh, you know, um, they, they're the, also the ones that come up with the tactics and things like that. Not the, not the regular bank teller, but the high up people that work work, work with uh, the investment side of um, their uh, the banking uh, industry and servicing loans, right? Um, servicing a specialist, I, I think that's what they're called. Or, uh, but nonetheless, with that, with that being said, uh, they get audited. So let's say, for example, and you can Google this, that uh, you know, 
ABC, EFG uh, bank, you know, I just don't want to say a real bank's name, they get audited and they find out predatory lending is going on, that they're not complying to um, uh, federal law rules and regulations governing, you know, a certain stuff. When they, they see that, they'll be like, okay, that's a million dollar fine. Okay, but what if the what if the servicing loan and the investors were able to make three or four million dollars off of doing that, and then when they got audited, if in the chance that you know they all get audited, but not everybody gets caught, you know, or not all their stuff gets caught, they get audited, and when they get audited or whatever, it uh you know that's a that's a million dollar fine right there, and those are the kind of uh, fines that they actually get when they when they break these policies, and you, once you Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. They'll get a million dollar fine for 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 not doing that right. And then on top of them not doing that, um, you know, if they if they broke that rule but still made three million dollars on top of it, who cares? So that those those practices and those stuff still goes on. It also goes on a whole lot in the used car industry. So if you remember with um, the stuff that happened in 2020, and even right now, your used vehicle is worth a lot more than you actually paid for it if you bought it before 2020. Why is that? Does that mean like, you know, one, that's uh, good news for the auto industry when they go ahead and, uh, you know, you, you take that car to them, they buy it off of you and they put you in a new one and things like that. Now you're, you know, they're, they're basically getting a double bubble. They're, they're getting paid from the very first car that you did and then you turn it back, they get to make a, another commission and sell for, for much more, uh, more and then they just sold you a brand new car, right? And uh, upon them doing that, they are uh, doing subprime uh, loans again and the same stuff about them like they don't get um audited uh as bad as um the servicing uh, loan departments like banks and stuff i can't t talk to the numbers because google can only answer so much ai can only answer so much but um you know you could do your own research but uh, on top of me saying those things right you got problems with social security you know people that are, are, are my age and if you're around my age as well we're not gonna have a social security um, when it comes to retirement. So if you plan to retire when you're 72 or 65 uh, or whatever age you, you plan on doing that, there's a great chance that you're not even gonna have social security at that, uh, at that point, especially with these illegals and these migrants that are coming through and everything else, right? They're taking jobs. They're also committing a lot of crimes on uh, United States soil. Um, our, uh, we are in a recession right now. I mean, go to the grocery store. I mean, I don't even have to, you don't even have to Google this. Go to the grocery store and try to get a two liter soda, like $3.99. You can go ahead and get yourself a, uh, a large, um, uh, a large uh, uh, soda from uh, Burger King. It's three bucks. Everything is costing way too much. And it's not like I live in a place that's, you know, super, super, you know, expensive and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't live in a state that, that, that's like that. Th those are the prices I'm dealing with, right? Three ninety nine for uh, for a two liter, and that's not at the expensive place. That's at uh, that's at Walmart. You know what I mean? You know, you, the off brand sodas are, are are three bucks. You know, some of them you can find for a dollar, but those are the off brands. But it wasn't it wasn't much long ago that uh, a two liter was ninety nine cents. You guys go to the grocery store. You guys know what I'm saying is the truth. So um, with saying that, there's so many other things that I could point out that you know why I named this video everybody needs to be prepared for homelessness so what would be the best way like I don't want to just you know if everybody's uh, you know watching this video goes in and says you know hey those are all great points and there's a lot of stuff that you can touch on as well but what is the the end all be all right how do you prepare for something like this okay so um, for a lot of people they think that their friends and their family um, you know will will take them in and maybe they will a lot of them they won't you might think that they do it will or that they, they, they will I mean you might think that they uh, will do what they can to help you it doesn't mean that they don't love you when they don't uh, I, I, I've, I could go through my whole list of phone numbers I have friends and family and people that all love me and they love me dearly they would be so upset if something should ever happen to me really bad however if I said I'm in a tight, tight spot can I can I come live there until I get off uh, get off my feet they don't have the means. Everybody is struggling so hard. They don't have the means. And I'm, you know, with friends and family, I mean, well, with friends, they don't, they have their own family dynamic, especially when you get to, you know, to my age and, and, uh, and whatnot, right? But homelessness um, can happen to you at any time. It could happen to you when you're a, uh, a kid, could happen to when you're a teen, could happen when you're a young adult, can happen, um, you know, at my age, could happen to you much older. If Social Security started messing up right now, and let's say that uh, they, you know, uh, it took three or four months before they got everything back on track for some reason, those three or four months, how many of those um, elderly people or the disabled people did not have the means to go ahead and make another income or, you know, in, in this economy can go ahead and do so, do something like that. Those people, you know, might not have family and friends. They might not have things that will take them in. They're gonna be on the street. 
You know what I mean? And not everybody on the street drinks and does stuff, right? I don't do either of them. Uh, if you're new here, you know, everybody who's been watching me and rocking me for a while knows that I don't do that crap. Um, and I don't ever suggest you do. So when you're getting prepared for uh, homelessness, that's the first thing I would tell you. Don't drink, don't do anything, don't fall on, you know, tempted towards that stuff. Try to build yourself a nesting egg. And that's another thing too, when you um, become homeless, or let's say, you know, you know you're about to be homeless right now, so now you're trying to prepare to, 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 to get everything going, it's better to be prepared, it's, it's better to um, be ready than to get ready. And one of the, the cold hard things is that when you start selling your things thinking that, you know, you paid $500 for that PlayStation 5 and you're gonna get something close to it, you're not. I sold all my retro games and my retro games were worth a whole lot of money. I got pennies on the dollar and then I lost the sentimental value because, uh, you know, I love those old old video games, you know. Uh, they were worth uh, more than just money to me, but they, 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 they accumulated a lot of money, you, you know, boom. So when you sell them, it's like, oh, I know this is a hundred dollar video game because um, you know it sold on eBay for that. You go ahead and list it, and when you list it, it doesn't get sold for a week or two, and you put a good price on there so it gets sold quick. When it's it's like the only people that want to buy it are people that want it for for, for little to nothing. And even though when you go out and you're a consumer, it feels like you're paying top dollar for everything. Isn't that crazy? And I have videos talking about that. What it uh, you know me losing my sentimental stuff and me selling it because. This is a uh, lifestyle where you 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 can't take everything with you. You take your bare, necess uh, bare necessities and you hope that you plan um, uh, the best that you you know how. And everybody's situation will be different if they become homeless. Like if you're somebody who's got a drinking problem, you and and you're already on the fritz with uh, with with whatever's going on with this economy, and you're barely keeping afloat, or you're underwater and you're using your credit cards to live off of. If that's happening to you. Uh, and it all depends on what state you're from. Start looking up research, you know, uh, researching stuff now of uh, you know, um, you know, calling two one one and where the food banks are, where the shelters are, and things like that. And um, find out in your local area are those, shel are those shelters even a good idea for you? Uh, from where, where I'm at, no. Uh, I'll, I'll sleep on the street before I even sleep in a shelter, and I've, I got videos talking about uh, just why. But the way the you know everybody does need to get prepared for homelessness, even if it doesn't happen to you, it's such a reality. And I ask that you uh, you know if you've never seen my videos before, I ask that you think inside your head. Stop thinking of the old way of thinking when it comes to homeless. The homeless that I see are people living in their cars that just um, you know can't pay their rent. You know if they work, I work. We don't make enough, you know. Um, yeah, the homeless that I see are people, you know, and I, the, yes, of course, the old way of thinking, there, there are those people like that, you know, but I, I see more than half the people living in a car just trying to get paycheck to paycheck, or before they lived in that situation, they were paycheck to paycheck. How many of you guys feel that way? And I know that's not, you know, it's really bad to, 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 to talk about that, you know, like, it's not bad, like, to, for me for you to talk about that, but it's, it's not something that when you sit around your family table and you have your grandma over and it's Christmas time, you start talking about how many uh, months you're back on your mortgage or that you're in foreclosure at the moment, you know, um, or that that job, you know, what they just cut your hours again. And when they cut your hours, now you're not eligible for um, the, uh, the the medical uh, medical stuff. Now you're not eligible for the PTO. You know, maybe now now you're not eligible for the overtime. And without that overtime, you weren't you aren't going to make it. You know, um, one of the things that you can do to prepare is, um, and I, I tried saying this in yesterday's video a little bit, was, um, uh, man, I just forgot the word. It's, um, there's so many people that, that have skill sets. So if you wanted to, um, let's say for example, be a mobile mechanic, if you look up right now on, uh, on Google or anything like that, there's tons of mobile mechanics. So if you learned a skill on uh, being able to work on vehicles and you want to be able to go ahead, go mobile and, and fix your stuff, there's uh, too much competition. There's too much competition because everybody's struggling that so much. Everybody's trying to make something, you know, and that's what I want to get into. Um, and uh, that's what I would like for you guys to think about as well. Think about, you know what, hope that you don't ever become homeless. Always be nice to homeless people. Try to think of them in a different way and then also um, start preparing on what you can do just in case that should ever happen. Even if you have millions of dollars right now, think about how many people actually won the lottery when they were poor and within one year afterwards, they're, bad, they're, they're worse than when they started. How could that happen? And that's literally, um, you know, uh, 
uh, like financial liter literacy uh, issues. You know, they did not know how to, to control their money because they never had it. You know, at least that's the the, the, the gist of what I get on it. Um, if you did watch this far, I ask that you um, put a special word to let me know. And I think the the, the special word should be twist, spelled uh, T-W-I-S-T. Please leave a, a like and a thumbs up and thank you for rocking with me.